This is so distracting. I'm really going to have to focus on being able to do this care collab video justice in order to not disappoint Ed's orchids and Karin's orchids who are collaborating with this care video today. Because this bloom just has everything about it that I get kind of off on a tangent and a trajectory that it, for me, it's hard to focus. <laughs> Rincolelio Cattleya Golf Green Hair Pig. What is not to like about this? This orchid just, just makes it very difficult for me to concentrate. So if I go off on a tangent and then I do not circle back to that thought, please, please make a point of that in the comments below and I will be so happy to clarify anything that at this point in time, I'm just going around and around and not coming back to. She is so beautiful. I am so fortunate that at this point in time with the care collab that we're doing, I do have this orchid in bloom because normally, normally, she blooms after my Digbiano, which is one of her parents. I usually get the Digbiano to bloom and then afterwards in rapid succession, my golf green hair pig blooms. This year, in 2021, it's the other way around. Surprise, I'm very surprised, but I'm super, super pleased that for the Care Collab that we are doing, she is in bloom. It is not a requirement for any of the Care Collabs that an orchid is in bloom. It is wonderful when you do get that opportunity. I'm grateful that I can show my blooms to all of you. Let's get into, first of all, let's meet the parents. I happen to have the parents as well. This is not a care guide about the Moscom, Cattleya Moscom, and it is not a care guide about the Brasso Vola Digbiana. But these two are the immediate and direct parents. There are seven more. Borsovitiae, Mossiae, Mendeliae, Intermedia, Quadricolor, and the Dawiana, which I also have. But the Dawiana is like a 3% way, way back. So it doesn't really count. But seeing as I have it, I brought her out. Now I'm going to do some rearranging and we'll continue with the care. I do not want the moss comb in this bright light. It's not used to it just yet. And I don't want to get even more distracted by having to worry about how long I'm going to be talking about the care of the Rincolelia golf green hair pig. All right, so that's secured the other orchids. The Digbiana can stay. She loves the sun. Might as well take advantage of it for the time being. First of all, how is it possible that an orchid with such gorgeous blooms, and for the first time ever, I have two. But how is it possible that anyone would name something as delightful and gorgeous as this hair pig? Trust me, for years I've been looking, I've been trying to find the reason behind the name of this. Golf green, I understand, because it came from golf orchids. And the initial breeder who registered this orchid in 2006 was Jean Delou. 2006, imagine that. That's not that long ago. And this orchid has made the rounds, has become a very, very popular hybrid amongst collectors. And to say, in my case, that she's easy to bloom is sort of an understatement. I can pretty much rely on her blooms. Normally I get them in March. Normally, again, the Digbiana blooms sooner. But I've never ever skipped a beat on blooming with this orchid. I live in southern Spain, so I have very, very hot summers. I've got a lot, a lot of light. And where this golf green hair pig lives is on the east side of my outdoor growing space during the summer when the night temperatures go above 15 degrees Celsius. And she is behind a white curtain to block her from direct sun because I have missed the mark and burnt her leaves, or one leaf. She is a little bit sensitive 
too direct sun if you don't time it right. So I wouldn't in the summer or in the hot months of the year put her in direct sun. I normally try to keep that curtain up for as long as possible during the morning to give her some direct sun. And then I raise it up again in the late afternoon when the sun has passed from the angle of where she lives in order to give her even more light. But everything around her, including the walls, is white, maximizing the reflection of the light in order to give her the brightest light possible. So yes, in my southern climate here, or by the Mediterranean, that is easy to do because we have plenty of light, we have plenty of sun. So just keep that in mind. If, for example, your Rincolalia Golf Green is not blooming but growing well, if I can do this with the light I have in southern Spain, and you have very strong light in an indoor growth space, it is possible that that is not even enough. So I would actually up the ante on the light, raise her up closer to the artificial lights, something like that. And that is only if you're finding it difficult to bloom this orchid. My preferred setup is LECA and self-watering because my climate is super dry. I struggle with humidity. I have no problem with watering this orchid abundantly during the summer months. During the time that she is not in active growth or not blooming, I pipe down on the fertilizer and I only fill the reservoir at the bottom of the pot to about 50%, basically just maintaining the moisture on the microfiber. What does it mean when an orchid is not in active growth? Is it on top of the pot or in the pot just because there's no new growth coming? Well, when it comes time to repot, it's always ideal to get new roots going first and then repot. Houston, we have a problem. This would be the time to repot while she's in bloom. No, I'm not going to repot her while she's in bloom. But when she's finished blooming, regardless of the time of year, I am going into that pot straight away, clean her up, clean the root system up, and then also possibly give her a bigger pot. But we always say that the cattleyas will forgive you and will not skip a beat if you repot in a timely manner when new roots are growing. So here we have that conundrum. We've got new roots growing right now, and she's only just opened her blooms. So that'll be another three weeks while the blooms last before I can address the pot. I don't think that she would suffer a repot right now with new roots growing while she's in bloom. However, I would damage the blooms because of the process of repotting is quite radical and you're shifting the orchid around. So that would bruise the blooms and I really don't want that. They are absolutely something else. They are a sight to behold. My favorite top five is Brassavola Digbiana, her parent. I mean, this is a Brassavola Digbiana without having to wait for a Brassavola Digbiana to bloom. To me, there's not really that much difference because you can see that the characteristics of the Digbiana are very, very dominant in this bloom. All the frilliness, all the funkiness, the sparkles, I hope they are coming through on camera. That crystalline effect, the fragrance is a Digbiana. The fact that it's nocturnal, that's a Digbiana as well. It's so lemony, it is so fresh. It's one of the best air fresheners that you can imagine having in your home without smelling artificial. Unfortunately, if you grow this in a greenhouse, I highly recommend that you venture to your greenhouse when your golf green is in bloom in order to appreciate the fragrance. Mine grows in the dining room during the winter months, and this is January. So I have her fragrance in my entire lower part of the home when I come down the stairs in the morning. I know exactly who's playing, even though I have other orchids that are fragrant currently in bloom as well. I know who's playing. She is intense and she is beautiful. 
Not even the sun now would make a difference with her fragrance. It's the nighttime when she comes alive. The only attribute I can see here from the Moscom is that little blush of pink in here in the lip. Last year she had some little blushes right on the petals, but uh, this year no blush, just the bottom of the lip. I've seen that are a little bit more predominant on the blush, mine isn't, and that's okay. That really is okay. I'm a huge fan of Chartreuse Green Blooms. Huge fan. When you give me something that smells divine as well, then I'm in. I need that orchid in my life. So in the winter, I try my best not to have the temperatures drop below 15 degrees Celsius. That's the ambient air. Because of the fact that I am growing in LECA only. And the evaporative cooling around those roots could be a detriment if I reduced the temperatures, the ambient air further. So I always guesstimate a three degrees difference in the pot to what is in the ambient air, and that would make the pot a 12 degree environment. Not so good for cattleyas. And when they're moist, in my case now a little bit more wet, yeah, you can see a little bit that that could be issues developing. However, in order to keep her a little bit more drier, like I said, I do not fill my reservoir to the maximum capacity. For me, it's all about just maintaining the moisture on the microfiber. In the summer, I have absolutely all guns blazing, so to speak. My sprayers are a go-go. I have no issues whatsoever with how much water I give her, as the air will dry her out within at least an hour, if not less. When the blooming now finishes, I will be doing a repot. Much needed because she's in this pot over two years. Not quite three years, but two. I like to have a bracket of between two and three years of any orchid in a pot in this setup to maintain the health of the root ball. There will be a repot coming up in about three to four weeks. Again, I do not mind the time of year when the orchid tells me it's go time because of the roots, normally I would be intervening right now, but I certainly do not want to interfere while this is happening. When she's not in active growth, I do not fertilize at all. I flush regularly because clearly that will be now leading up to the warmer months of the year. I keep the flushing process going in order to make sure that the roots get the oxygen exchange that they need and grow strong and healthy before she pushes another new growth. In that process, I might put in a little bit of CalMag at about 100 parts per million into the reservoir, depending on what I perceive the length of the roots are. I do not want to clog up my media with mineral deposits. So normally all I'm doing is flushing with RO water to encourage the roots to go down into the pot so that the next growth is ready to go. Only then when I see a new growth starting, Will I then actually start administering fertilizer at 300 parts per million every single time I fill the reservoir? Prior to filling the reservoir, I flush her through with plain RO water using her outside mask. And I flush that pot through twice with just plain RO water before refilling with fertilized water. And as it would be in the hotter months of the year, I can be generous and I can fill the reservoir up as far to the top as possible without drowning actual pot. So yes, I'm still baffled about the hair pig name. I would love to know why. And if you know why Jean Delou named this hair pig, please, please let me know in the comments below. Golf green? Okay, he's from Golf Orchids. Fine. Green because of the bloom. Makes sense. But why hair pig? I am not a pedantic name researcher. I look at my orchids, what's on the label, and then I learn as I go whether they've been reclassified. But some orchids just have me baffled and it's just something I would love to know. So again, if you know why hair pig, leave it in the comments below. I hope I have covered all the aspects of how I care for this orchid and get it to bloom. 
Clearly it may pose more questions. If I didn't circle back around to a thought, I would really appreciate your heads up. Meantime, I also want to say thank you so very, very much to Ed's orchids and to Karen's orchids for this care collab and the links of their videos will be in the description below. I will always link the channel first and then when I see the videos, I will update the links to pertain to this specific orchid. So if you see this in the early hours and the links haven't been updated, I really encourage you to come back and find the links updated in order to see how they care for their orchid in their climate, wherever they are, their setup. And then maybe out of all the three videos, there will be something there to help you to make this orchid grow for you successfully. If you see this video at a later stage, I invite you to get in touch with any of the three of us and ask if you could do the next Care Collab video, which would be an update. We'd be very, very happy to get you on board on all the future updates. Get in touch with any of the three of us. My email is always in the description. This is not just a video for the three channels. This is now going to hopefully expand to other creators who make videos. And when they see this, if you are interested, let us know. We'll be happy to have you on the updates. Thank you everyone who took the time to watch. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate having you here. It was a joy to do this video. My next care collab might be a rescue. <laughs> but for now, I am super pleased that Golf Green Hair Pig was in bloom for this one. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.